Well, I just want to give a short explanation of some of the concepts or from the first video on volume visualization. So we saw in a previous video that this thing here was volume rendered. And we briefly covered the fact that given a set of intensities here for, on the x-axis from 0 to 1981, you define a function which describes how to convert these values into an opacity value. And similarly, the, you convert the intensity values into a color. Here we also have some gradient uh, conversion function, which actually looks at the local image gradient, but we'll leave that for now. But I wanted to go into slightly more detail on how this compositing process works. So how do you get this kind of semi-transparent effect? So in the notes I've produced some wonderfully hand-drawn diagrams. So the basic principle is to use ray casting. Now within the literature there are two terms, ray casting and ray tracing. They're often used very interchangeably. Ray casting, I would say, simply refers to, ray casting came as first, uh, it simply refers to projecting one ray of light, or virtual light, through your volume of data or your world of data and only using one ray. Typically, ray tracing is used to refer to the fact that when this ray hits something, so if you imagine a solid object in the middle, like a sphere, you could, start, you could, you could produce several other rays, one of them looking at reflection, so you could compute the angle of reflection on your object. You could also, if, if you said that the thing that you hit was a different medium, you could use uh, various formula to compute where that light, ray of light would refract to. Uh, and you could also produce a bunch of rays going towards each light source. So imagine there's three lights, you'd have three more rays, and you would continue to trace these extra rays. So for example, if a ray that was heading towards a light source bumped into another fully uh, opaque object, you would know therefore that that light source did not illuminate the point that you are currently trying to compute for. So the difference between ray casting is that it's one ray and ray tracing is that it results in multiple rays. And this ray tracing approach isn't typically used in medical imaging. The medical imaging data firstly is, is quite big and secondly it's complicated enough. You're not trying to do um, movie grade graphics. You're trying to interpret the data and make some kind of understanding or interpretation of the physical anatomy. You don't need something that's photorealistic. So most or all of the volume rendering examples I've seen I would say you should consider as ray casting. That's one ray per pixel. So when I say volume rendering is done by ray casting, you may also see some people refer to it as ray tracing, but I don't believe that's the, the best notation. Anyway, back to the how do you do it. So if you imagine you had an image that you're trying to render, and this image is obviously made of pixels, then what you're doing is you're taking your camera parameters that we covered in our camera calibration, and instead of working out how rays of light hit your image, how does the 3D world project into 2D, you take your center of projection and you project a ray of light out through each pixel. Now obviously, until you get to your 3D volume data, there's nothing to do here. Between the front face, the first face that you hit, and when you leave your 3D volume, so when I say 3D volume, it's typically your CT or MR volume data. So between the entry point and the exit point, you want to step along this ray, typically uh, in steps of you know half a millimeter or something. And at each step, you can read 
the value of the data in your CT or MR scan. That means you will have a sample uh, of image intensity. So going back to this scan here, these MR values range between 0 and 1981. So at each step along this ray, I would have some value of between 0 and 1981. Now, for each one of these values, you could then, you'd have an opacity lookup table. So here I've drawn it by hand, but it, it directly represents this, this graph here. So in my hand-drawn drawing, you might have defined some function, and for every intensity, you can map it to a value of opacity, which on the next slide we will call alpha. Similarly, you might have some color map, some range of colors. It could be just, you know, grayscale. It could be some heat map kind of thing. Uh, here I've raided my kid's Sharpie box and I've made a nice rainbow color. So for every intensity, you can map it to a color. So you have a color or an opacity. Then the question is simply, um, how do I composite it all together? So imagine I get, this is a top-down view of your 3D data here. Now, imagine I get to the first value. Well, the first value you just take as alpha and C, or you, or you might call that alpha zero and C zero. And then I've just written out this kind of update equation. So the color at, at step or iteration I is equal to the previous color plus one minus the previous alpha times the current values that you've just interpolated. So for every one of these points, you can accumulate a new, a new, a new value for C and a new value of alpha using these formula. So alpha is updated as you go through the volume and so is C. Now you can, if the alpha ever gets to one, that means fully opaque. That means nothing else is visible. So from the perspective of this camera here, looking this way, if you get to an alpha value of one, it means that you're fully opaque, so it's not transparent, which means anything behind that is invisible. So this is clipped at one. This means you can stop the ray early. So this simple formula is basically showing you that the color and the opacity are sort of accumulated as you go and it's determined by the opacity so if the first thing that you hit is fully opaque then obviously it stops very quickly so if you go back uh, to these graphs if these graphs just determine that very low values of intensity are very very opaque then that's where you see the external surface of the volume if however you manage to set these external values down to being transparent, you start to be able to see through them. So the opacity affects basically how far you can see through the data, but it is dependent on the functions that are mapping color or mapping intensity to the color and the opacity. So overall, that is a simple introduction to how those formulas actually work. There are obviously many, many more ways of doing this. Uh, for example, I've written on the notes, you know, other bits of rendering, other types of rendering include things like maximum intensity projection, where again, if you consider ray casting, but instead of mapping it through a bunch of colors, just pick the maximum value. This is quite good at looking at breast mammograms because you just pick out the highest value, which is likely to be uh, calcifications. Uh, which are somewhat indicative of uh, tumorous regions. But the overall principle is the same. Uh, volume rendering is achieved by iterating through your volume and computing some function and assigning it to your current pixel value.